Hi, kids. Wow, it's great to see all your smiling and happy faces again. My name's Del Cullum. This is my wife, Dee. Hi, everyone. And we had so much fun reading the wild adventures of Scurry the Squirrel to you kids last time that we couldn't wait to come back and read you the second book. So here we are. You want to read the second book together? Yay! All right. Okay. But before we do, let me introduce you to our friend and wildlife ambassador, Athena. Reach out. Say hi, Athena. Greetings, everyone. Happy to be back. Athena, you told me there was something special about this second Scurry the Squirrel book. Can you tell us what it is? Oh, no, my dear. You'll have to wait until the end of the book to find out. But it's pretty special. Well, let's not wait any longer. In fact, I'm really excited to get started. The name of the book is... The Wild Adventures of Scurry the Squirrel, Book 2, Scurry's Wildlife Friends. Just looking at this cover is very interesting because I see a number of Scurry's wildlife friends right here on the cover. Can everyone else see them? Well, first, let's take away all the lettering and make it a little easier. There you go. Now, does everybody see the deer? Of course, he's the biggest one in the forest, but he's the farthest back as well. How about the chipmunk? Do you see him? That's right, there he is on the ground wagging his little tail. How about the cardinals? Do you see those songbirds? Those beautiful red cardinals? That's right, there's two of them. There they are. And last but not least, does everybody see the hidden butterfly? Oh, there he is. He's not hidden anymore. And there he goes. Yes, we sure have a good adventure ahead of us. So let's get started with Scurry the Squirrel, Scurry's Wildlife Friends. Scurry is now a full-grown adult eastern gray squirrel, enjoying a wonderful life near the Hampton Wildlife Rehab House, where he had been raised by Dell and his wife Dee. Scurry and his mate, Miss Piggy, no longer lived in the man-made squirrel house, but had moved into a tall tree where they built their own natural home, called a dray. A dray is a sturdy nest made of sticks and leaves, packed tightly together high up in the branches of the tallest trees. A dray stays warm through the colder months, cool during the warmer months, and remains dry when it rains. A dray is both a home and a birthing nest for a squirrel family. Scurry's children had all grown up and moved to their own drays in nearby trees. It was the fall season, and food storage was important. All the squirrels in the area were busy gathering as many nuts as possible before the cold weather set in. Miss Piggy was one of those squirrels, but Scurry had a different idea. It was still early in the season, and it had been a while since his last learning adventure, so he decided to spend the day exploring the nearby woods hoping to find another, less crowded area with available food. Before leaving for the day, Scurry looked around, enjoying the sight of young squirrels playing in the yard as they searched for acorns. Squirrels of all ages will play while they work, and it's a favorite pastime for the younger ones. Running, climbing, leaping from branch to branch... Even wrestling are all forms of play that provide necessary exercise. Playing tag is probably their favorite game of all. It is very funny to watch. On this day, as the rising sun began to warm the air and lift the morning fog, Scurry started off on his adventure through the woods. He had traveled beyond the yard before, always with care although he had lots of wildlife friends around the area, 
and seemed to meet more whenever he went. Scurry was a smart squirrel, and he loved learning. Each adventure taught him lessons, making his days very special. He turned away from his yard and hopped, smiling, into the woods. Scurry's woods was really a small forest filled with tall trees, many bushes, large rocks, and a winding brook. It was darker in the woods than in the yard because the canopy of leaves atop the trees blocked out much of the sunlight. There were narrow trails going in different directions. One trail ran all the way through to the other side of the woods. Scurry had never traveled that far. Many animals share this wooded area. It was a place where wildlife could find food, water, shelter, and learn about each other, and even find a mate and start a family. It was Scurry's real natural home. An animal's natural home is called its habitat. Meanwhile, back at the rehab house, a call came in about an adult male deer with his antlers caught in plastic fencing debris that had been thrown into the woods. Dell grabbed his gear, jumped into his truck, and headed out toward the location of the deer, which was not far away. When he had driven just a short distance, he stopped at the traffic light and saw a baby gray squirrel slowly crossing the road. The tiny animal stopped and seemed to freeze there on the yellow line. Dell watched the traffic light turn from red to green. He opened his door and jumped out to the street, waved at the oncoming vehicles to stop, ran to the frightened little squirrel, picked it up, and hurried back to his truck. Then Dell pulled over to the side of the road, holding the teeny squirrel, looked up at the surrounding treetops, searching for a nest that the little squirrel might have fallen from, but no dre was visible and there were no other squirrels in sight. But there were lots of vehicles driving in all directions. The area was too dangerous for a baby squirrel. Dell decided it would be best to take the little animal back to the rehab house, but he remembered he had to help the trapped deer. There was a soft towel in the truck, and Dell wrapped it around the little squirrel and placed the trembling animal on the passenger seat. He then drove to where the deer was trapped. Arriving at the location, Dell sized up the situation and got a blanket from the truck to throw over the head of the large deer. This calmed the animal, allowing Dell to safely help the trapped buck. A buck is a male deer. A female deer is called a doe. Only male deer have antlers that grow on their heads. The antlers fall off each year, and new ones grow in. Baby deer are called fawns. They have white spots all over when they are babies, but the spots disappear as they get older. After the buck was calm, Dell carefully cut the plastic fencing, which was wrapped around the deer's antlers, and pulled the long strips away until the large animal was freed. The deer seemed very relieved, and Dell also was relieved to see it had no other injuries. The buck looked at Dell and then turned and slowly walked away. Dell gathered up the discarded fencing and put it in his truck to be thrown away properly at the dump. He and his new baby squirrel friend then headed back to the rehab house. Meanwhile, back in the woods, Scurry was having a very good time. His first wildlife encounter was with his cousin, Willie the Whistle Pig. Willie is a groundhog, which is the largest member of the ground squirrel family. Groundhogs dig deep into the earth, creating tunnels that lead to their underground homes. An animal's home that lies on or below the ground is called a den or a burrow. A groundhog's den is three or four feet down below the frost line. Willie's den was under a pile of logs that had been left in the woods by tree cutters. The logs had extra protection and warmth to the den during the cold months. Scurry asked Willie why he was called the Whistle Pig. Willie explained that his real wildlife name was Marmot. However, 
in different parts of the country, marmots are called other things. In some places, they're called land beavers, while in others, they're called woodchucks. Willie's favorite was whistlepig, a nickname given to the marmot because of the high-pitched whistle it makes when alarmed. The whistle serves to alert other wildlife of danger. Willie's whistle was very loud, and he always kept his eyes open for any approaching danger which might be in the woods. Willie's woodland friends felt safe when he was out and about patrolling the forest. Groundhogs are good climbers, but they don't climb trees the way their squirrel cousins do. In the cold months, it's hard for groundhogs to walk in the snow and very difficult to find food. So during the winter, groundhogs bundle up in their dens, get nice and cozy, and sleep right through the season. This is called hibernation. Other hibernators include chipmunks, skunks, bats, bears, bees, snakes, and even frogs. A groundhog is a true hibernator and would be very hard to awaken if disturbed during its long winter's nap. In February, Willie wakes up just long enough to crawl out of his den and takes a look outside so he can guess how much longer it will be until spring arrives. He then goes back to sleep until it's warmer. That is how Groundhog Day got its name. Scurry said goodbye to his cousin Willie and continued on his adventure through the woods. Back at the rehab house, Dell examined the baby squirrel he had brought home, and Dee prepared a safe, comfortable cage where it could be raised until it was old enough to be released back into the wild. Both Dell and Dee thought it best to give the little girl squirrel a name, since it was going to be living there for a month or more. They chose to call her Scooter. They were excited to introduce Scurry to his new little sister, but Scurry was out exploring with a big day ahead of him. Squirrels are good gardeners, not with flowers and vegetables, but with trees. They spend hours each day burying many types of seeds, nuts, and berries. However, it's the acorn that they prefer to store for the winter. Lots of wildlife also enjoy acorns as food. Squirrels bury so many acorns that they forget about some of them. Those neglected acorns can grow into trees or are dug up by rodents or birds or even other squirrels. Sometimes, if a squirrel thinks another squirrel is watching, he'll make believe he's burying a nut, but instead he'll hold it in his cheek, pretend to bury it, and finally sneak off and hide it somewhere else. It's a fun game they like to play. So many of these forgotten acorns end up becoming big tall trees and eventually great new location for squirrel drays. You can say that squirrels plant the seeds that grow into large wooded areas called forests. Scurry went to work finding and burying acorns until it was close to lunchtime. He looked around and realized his work had brought him halfway through the woods. He had never been this far into the forest. To get an overview of his location, Scurry, holding a nice fat acorn, climbed high up to a treetop and ate his snack while looking down at the forest floor, watching his fellow wildlife and enjoying the beauty of the woods. After his meal, Scurry grabbed a small stick of hardwood to chew on. This chewing behavior is important to all squirrels. They need to do it for at least an hour a day because their teeth never stop growing. So it is necessary to keep them filed down to the proper size by gnawing on hardwood sticks and hard shell nuts, such as acorns and walnuts. Before returning to the ground, Scurry climbed to the highest branch and poked his head through the leaves to see the sky. Big clouds were beginning to drift overhead. Scurry was happy to notice that they were not rain clouds, but were the big puffy kind. Some were shaped like things Scurry had seen before. One cloud 
looked like the stuffed toy he had played with as a baby. Another looked just like a big fluffy acorn. Scurry smiled as each cloud slowly drifted by. Scurry was having so much fun watching the clouds that he lost track of the time. It was getting later in the afternoon, time to start heading home. The air was getting colder and the woods darker, but at least it wasn't going to rain. If it did rain, Scurry was always prepared. His long fluffy tail was, among many things, a handy raincoat. All he had to do was curl it over his head and body to stay dry. A squirrel's tail is also used for balance when jumping from tree limb to tree limb and can be used as a windbreaker, a shield, or even a rudder when swimming. Importantly, a squirrel can also use its tail to silently warn other squirrels of nearby trouble by waving it quickly up and down. Now, suddenly, the forest had become very quiet. Scurry looked around but didn't see any other animals. He began to worry. Walking alone slowly, he listened carefully, but there was nothing to be heard. Something was wrong. Approaching an old fallen tree, Scurry saw the little eyes of a chipmunk peering out from underneath. It was Mr. Chip Chipperson, who seemed to be hiding. All at once, a loud, high-pitched whistle echoed through the woods. It was Willie's whistle, warning everyone of danger. Scurry didn't know what was happening and didn't wait to find out but quickly jumped up into a nearby tree and climbed to a safe branch where he sat quietly to watch the scene below. Seconds later, a big red fox came prancing through the woods, followed by her five babies, called Kits or Pups. Mother Fox, called the Vixen, was leading her youngsters to a wide open field beyond the woods to practice hunting for food. Father Fox is called a renard, Todd, or simply a dog. He stayed behind to tend to the den. The red fox is a close relative of a dog, like coyotes and wolves. Foxes often live in dens below the ground, like groundhogs do. Unlike groundhogs, foxes do not hibernate, but stay active through the winter months. Foxes like to chase small animals, such as Scurry and his friends, so everyone remained still and quiet until the fox family disappeared into the distance. I don't know about you, Dee, but I think this is a great opportunity to take a short break, let everyone get up and stretch, and let that fox family get way down the trail out of sight so that we can continue our story with nothing to worry about. When we come back from our break, Dee, why don't you finish reading to all the kids? Right, D, it's your turn. Go ahead and finish the story for the kids. Once the danger passed, the woods came alive again. 
Birds sang, flying from tree to tree. Chipmunks and mice came out of hiding and ran around playing tag. The forest felt safe once more, and Scurry climbed down from his tree to continue on his way. As he jumped onto the ground, his eye was caught by a pretty orange and black butterfly who fluttered nearby. It was challenging him to a race. Scurry knew right away that it was a monarch, a common butterfly type. The monarch had heard of a milkweed patch just outside the edge of the woods and had come to enjoy this favorite food. Scurry promised the butterfly he would race another time, but right now he wanted to keep moving toward home. The monarch said goodbye to Scurry and flew away. A little farther up the trail toward home, Scurry spotted another one of his friends, Peter Opossum. Opossums are interesting animals and are one of a kind in all of America. Like monkeys, opossums have tails that are used for climbing and grabbing, and the female opossums carry their newborn babies in a belly pouch, just like their Australian cousins, the kangaroos, koalas, and wombats. When the young opossums get too big for the pouch, they climb onto their mother's back and get carried everywhere until they are old enough to walk and keep up on their own. Opossums smile a lot, which shows off their nice clean teeth. An opossum has 50 teeth, more than any other mammal in America. Maybe that's why they smile so much. Opossums do not hibernate and are active throughout the cold winter months. However, because their ears, feet, and tail are hairless, they often stay in their warm dens for days at a time, only coming out to search for a quick meal. During the warmer months, they eat more often because food is more available. Opossums eat just about everything. One of their favorite things to eat are ticks. This makes the opossums very beneficial to both their wildlife neighbors and even humans. A single opossum can eat up to 5,000 ticks in one season. That's a lot of ticks. Opossums are also very clean animals. They bathe or groom themselves often. Peter Opossum had just woken up and was still a bit sleepy, but was happy to see his friend Scurry. Much like the raccoon and the great horned owl, the opossum is a nighttime wanderer and sleeps most of the day. Nighttime animals have excellent eyesight, even in the dark. Scurry's cousins, the flying squirrels, also see well at night. But Scurry was a daytime squirrel, and it was important that he get home before dark. Further along the trail, a beam of sunlight broke through an opening in the treetops and shone down on a small, thick patch of red, ripe raspberries, setting the sweet fruits aglow. Scurry couldn't resist this delicious treat and leaped over to eat a few. The berries were so sticky and juicy that Scurry had to clean his face after he was done. Perched there on the forest floor, he noticed that the ground here was covered with freshly fallen acorns, ready for gathering. Happily, it was not too far from home. This could be a great new spot he had been hoping to find. After filling his belly with berries and nuts, he memorized the location and waddled on his way. Soon Scurry could see the open yard of the rehab house in the distance. He was getting close to home. Just then, Mr. Peepers, the cardinal, landed on a rock next to Scurry. They were good pals, and Mr. Peepers was happy to see his friend returning from the woods and wanted to hear all about Scurry's day. But it was beginning to get dark so Scurry promised Mr. Peepers that he would tell him all about his adventure in the morning. It had been a long and exciting day. He had learned a lot and felt quite proud to be a member of the big wildlife family. He was lucky to have so many good friends in the wild and to live in such a beautiful place. Scurry was just about home when he heard a noise coming up from behind him. He turned to see two of his white-tailed deer friends. They rushed past him toward the yard. Scurry wondered, what's the rush? Then he saw Dee walking on the back porch, 
holding a handful of sliced apples, which she tossed out onto the ground. Then she threw some seeds for the birds and chipmunks. Scurry sat at the edge of the woods and watched all the happy animals coming out for this end of the day snack. Every day at sunset, many animals return to their dens, drays, nests, and whatever they call home, and sleep until the next morning, while other wild animals wake up after sleeping all day and enjoy the darkness of night. Scurry will talk more about these animals in the tale of his next adventure. Scurry's day had been a huge success. He had visited with some of his friends and family. He had found a new autumn food spot with both nuts and fruit. He had met a new butterfly friend. He played a game with the clouds and had avoided trouble with a family of red foxes. He had even traveled to the middle of the woods, a distance he had never reached before. Would Scurry ever make it to the other side? Only time would tell. While entering the yard at the rear of the house, Scurry saw Dell walk out the back door with a handful of hazelnuts. Though Scurry had a full belly, there was always room for one last bedtime snack, and he hopped toward the deck for a hazelnut treat, a perfect ending to a perfect day. Scurry thought to himself, how could it get any better? Just then, Dee came outside and called Scurry over to the porch railing. With his hazelnut in his mouth, Scurry hopped onto the railing and ran over to sit next to Dee. She was holding something wrapped in a blanket. It was Scooter, curled up in a small warm ball. Dee introduced them and Scurry just stared. Then he gently placed his hazelnut next to the baby squirrel. Scooter was too young to eat the hard-shelled nut, but it was clear that Scurry was happy to have this new little sister to watch over. What a wonderful adventure and such a nice surprise at the end of the day. All the excitement had made Scurry sleepy and it was time to rest. He would dream of the future, looking forward to his next adventure. There was much more to see and much more to learn in the wild. As Scurry climbed to his dray in the nearby tree, he spotted something sitting on a distant tree limb at the wood's edge. It had orange feathers and was larger than a songbird. Scurry wanted to go introduce himself, but he was too sleepy. Perhaps he'll get another chance before his next adventure. Wow, that's pretty exciting, Athena. I guess that means we'll be reading more about you in the next book. I just can't wait to come back and read more. Well, we're just all going to sit back and be patient, Athena, until the next reading with your story. What a great job, Dee. Thanks an awful lot. Oh, and these are some great drawings from the students at the Amagansett Elementary School. Actually, the school I went to when I was a kid. What do you think about that, Athena? Those are some wonderful drawings, I should say. I suspect we're seeing some young, talented artists. Well, that's about all the time we have now, kids. So thanks again for staying with us and having this time together and talking about wildlife and reading stories. We'll be back to do it again real soon. But meanwhile, before we leave, can I get you to do me one favor again real quick? Can you all together say out loud my favorite two words? Wildlife matters. Ready? We'll do it together on the count of three. One, one two, two, three. three. Wildlife, Wildlife matters. matters. Thanks, kids. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. See you next time. Goodbye. Hi, everybody. Athena and I look forward to visiting real soon. Until then, remember, wildlife matters. <laughs>